Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers. I'm your host, Chris McGee. Joining me is Laker insider Mike Bresnahan from the Locked On Lakers podcast. And you can find him sometimes over where? At ESPN Radio? Yeah. Where yes. else? Oh, I mean, outside my house. He's Brian Kamenetsky. Hand handling. Yes. Doing whatever you got to do. Yeah. Are you excited for uh, the weekend? Uh, yes. Playoffs. 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 Basketball. What are we talking about? Playoffs. Yeah, Lakers are in it. Yes. It's a good feeling. How, how's Andy? Is he okay? He, as last I checked. Okay. You guys having dinner tonight? We are not. Okay. Just check. I think Brez thinks you guys are together all the time. I walk all his talks. Now, a lot of people, it's a common misconception. People yeah. think, you know, we're, we're grown people with families, and yes. people think we still, like, yeah. live together. Hey, like bunk beds, <laughs> right. Star Wars like, sheets, like nothing uh, like Mario that. Enjoying, Luigi. We have matching overalls. Perfect. Yeah. Different Perfect. colored hats. Let us, let us just believe what we want to believe. <laughs> yes. uh, okay, let's get right into it. Lakers and Grizzlies. Series coming up. Starts on Sunday. Game number one. It's on ABC. It's at noon. You know you can join us at 11 o'clock and switch over to the game and come back to us for the post-game show. You know how we like to do it. Um, and catch games two through six right here on Spectrum Sportsnet, starting with Wednesday's game two of their flight to Memphis. The Lakers held practice, and Darvin gave an update on the day of work. Feeling great, man. The energy has been great. You know, we put in the game plan yesterday, just had a, a, a really good long film session. Got on the court, walked through some stuff. That was about it. And then today, you know, coming out, getting active, moving around a little bit, getting a sweat, again, covering some of the things through breakdowns and whatnot. And um, we feel good. We'll get back on the floor tomorrow and just get ready to go tee it up on Sunday. Did you guys have everybody available today? Or yes. Except for Dennis. So we we, we, we uh, held Dennis out. With the foot? With the ankle? Just, yeah, precautionary. Just to give him, you know, a chance to get it treated and, and not – get any extra pounding. I think guys play harder. Um, brings a different element of um, your preparation and trusting it. You know, things can get really high, things can get really low. But you find yourself back to your preparation that you've been leaning on all season to kind of get you through the weight of the season as well. Um, at some point, it's going to be that. Um, and it's just the preparation. I enjoy the, 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 the preparation of preparing for a team, trying to take out what they do well, see if they'll capitalize, uh, and trying to focus on what we're trying to do. When we get up to the, to the plate, are we going to do what we wanted to do, or what we prepared to do, et cetera. How good were these two days off in terms of just getting a physical reset? For, I know you've been bad on some stuff, obviously, after the years after 82. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's major. Like I said, it was the, the win the other night was uh, very important to get these couple days uh, not off, but, you know, kind of – uh, take a take a deep breath. You know, we, we got in. You know, the last month and a half, two months. You know, every game uh, was was very crucial. So it was you know like a mental a mental war. Uh, you know, you had to attack every game as a must win. Um, and obviously now it's the same. But uh, last couple of days have been really nice. You know, we've we've got together as a team the last couple of days and you know uh, really really locked in and studied on the film. For you personally, do you like getting into town? As early as you guys will be getting into Memphis before a Sunday game? Uh, me personally, I do. I like to, you know, get there early, get acclimated, you know, into the city, into the, you know, just that whole new environment. And to kind of get guys away from their home situations, just, you know, just to lock in and, you know, get a clear mind. And uh, I think the earlier we get there, the better. You know, we need to get practice out there and uh, just get familiar with that whole atmosphere, that whole scenery. So, uh, me personally, I do. What a novel concept, getting a little rest the last couple of days. Lakers played on Tuesday. How important was that for them? Because when you look at that last stretch of 14 days, they had eight games. and Every single game felt like a must win. Yeah, it felt like, you know, seven-game series it, just in one game the other night against uh, Minnesota. And in that game, you know, LeBron played 45 minutes. AD played 43 so, yeah, I'd say this team needed some rest. You know, we've talked a little bit on these shows about how they looked a little fatigued mm -hmm. towards the end of the season. A couple of meaningless games. Not meaningless, but they're playing like a Utah team and a Phoenix team without their starters. So it's easy to kind of ease up a little bit. The Lakers did what they had to do. They won those games. But they, uh, they, they, they needed the rest. Unfortunately for them, Memphis got even more rest. You know, they didn't have to play their, their guys yeah. towards the end of the regular season. Uh, they had number two locked up for a little while there, so they're very well rested and they're at home beating. They, they do sometimes say that there's a little bit th as, as too much time off. Rust like, you know, versus rest. Yeah, yeah, they played no basketball for, right. you know, for a week and a half or whatever. I actually did, did some research, you know, spent some yeah. time on, on the internet um, looking around and I determined that in the history of organized sports, mm -hmm. No team has needed four days off more than these Lakers. Yes, uh, in between, like it's research. true, scientific. Yeah, um, 
I, had they lost to Minnesota and come back and won the, the second play-in and they go play, I, I don't think they would have had a chance to advance, and not because Memphis versus Denver or anything like that, just because they needed time off. They needed to get as much energy back, get off their feet, and if it's, if four days is going to seem like four weeks to these guys, given how hard they've been going. So let me ask you guys this. The Lakers get those four days uh, between games. You get Memphis basically with eight because mm -hmm. they didn't play in Sunday's final game in terms of their starters. Um, they always call game one like a feel-out game, right? And, and when you look at Memphis, the city's going to be going crazy, right? This is a brash, young, good team. LeBron, AD, and the Laker franchise coming into town. How, what do you expect game one to be like? I think Memphis is going to come out running. Yeah. I mean, look, this team was so good at home, 35-6, and six, best in the league, best home record since, since Golden State in the 2016-17 season. I mean, this is a really good home team. I think they're going to try to run the Lakers off the court. You know, they might be thinking, all right, this is an older team. Uh, we are not. We're very good at points in the paint. We're very good at fast break. We're very good at putting points on the board, period. I think they're going to try to uh, blow the doors off the Lakers. It's up to the, the more veteran Lakers to kind of slow the game down a little bit, really uh, have AD dominate in those half-court yeah, sets. It's like emotionally, I feel like if the Lakers can come out and you take that, that game one, it's not just game one, it's game one against the Lakers. Yeah. And it's, you know, the, the entire city is going to be jacked up for this. If the Lakers can get out and, and survive that first five or six or seven yeah. minutes of the first quarter, take some of the air out of the building. Now, I'm not even talking about, hey, can you get out to a 12-2 run, 14-2, whatever it might be. Just survive that first part, take some of the wind out of, the, uh, uh, out of that crowd, and now you've got a game. But I, I really feel like game two is the, is the pivotal one for the Lakers. I feel like, Agreed. you know, the Memphis has yeah. had that time off. The Lakers still are kind of bouncing back from all of those games to get yeah. where they are. I feel like game two is the one where, where you really got to try to steal that one. Mm -hmm. For our younger audience, um, go on the internet and do some research like BK and yeah. look up Thomas Hearns versus Marvin Hagler in that fight, and that's what you should <laughs> probably expect in that first quarter, just people throwing haymakers at each other. I think that's yeah. what's going to happen. I think it should be a lot of fun. Uh, the Lakers will have their hands full with John Morant in the series. In the last seven games against L.A., jaw has been putting up staggering numbers, close to 30 points per game while shooting 46% from deep and almost nine assists. Darvin knows it will take a whole team effort to contain jaw. Let's just make jaw see bodies, you know what I mean, without giving up too much. Just try to, you know, that's any NBA game for that matter. And now with the stakes being even higher and what he likes to do is live in the paint, you know, attacking downhill repeatedly, constantly with force. Um, we, we are, we're going to have our hands for our job has to be to not let them get inside of our defense, you know, continuously. So that's a huge, huge part of a transition D and then again, being great on the ball and having guys shifted behind the, the, the individual defender that's guarding the ball. Uh, you know, Josh is just a really good player, obviously, uh, as we've seen the last, you know, what, three years or so. Um, you know, so there's different variations we can do um, and, and different coverages we can try. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's, you know, a really good player. And, you know, he's going to, you know, ultimately get his. Um, so. Uh, we just got to limit it and make it hard for him in whatever way we can. And it's really just about us locking in him and playing as hard as we can. How important is transition defense going to be in this series? No, major. I mean, they, they get out and run. Uh, first unit, you know, loves to get to the rim. Uh, and the second unit, they, they shoot a lot of threes. But, you know, anytime you got Jaw on the court uh, with his explosiveness and his athletic ability, you know, he can get from one end to the other really quick. So, you know, it's just get back, load up. And, you know, try to stop the ball. For us, the challenge really is just, you know, showing him a crowd, showing him bodies. You know, uh, you know, he's elite in transition and uh, getting downhill. So for us, it's just packing the paint, showing him bodies and uh, showing him different schemes too. Uh, at this point in his career, he's kind of seen everything, you know, uh, all different coverages. So just try to be versatile with the coverages, showing him different looks and uh, being physical with him and, you know, throwing bodies at him. What type of challenges does John Moran present uh, as an opponent? I mean, I'd rather honestly just talk about us. Honestly, I mean, I'm sure everybody's talking about them. Okay. I don't so, really want so to give y'all no headlines. So, well, I, well, how about this? No, what do you me. guys need to do in the first two games to assure that you come back to LA?
contain John ja Morant. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's called a setup day. You got setup day. Uh, no, I, I think I think they're a tough team all the way around. Um, so I don't really I don't really want to. Um, Worry about too much. Put all our eggs in one thing because they they can they can capitalize from other areas too. They're well they're well run team. So simple as that. Quickly on John Morant, guys. Listen, never an easy task. He went for 28 of his 39 points back on February 28th in the third quarter. If you guys remember, and he attacked almost every single point was inside yep. the paint. Uh, he's going to be a tough stop. He, I, I don't really know who's going to try to guard him. Right, you would think Vando, but he's he's not that big. Uh, we're talking about uh, a guy, John Morant, who's six foot two. He's not like a Shea who's six six or an Anthony Edwards who's six four. He really is not a very big point guard. He's very quick. So this might have to come down to D'Angelo or uh, Austin Reeves, maybe Schroeder off the bench. He's going to get a little time sure, on him yeah. too. I, I think you got to keep Vando with, with some of the bigs for this one. So it's going to be interesting to see who gets first crack at trying to stop. Uh, is he the best point guard in the game? If not, he's really close right now, guys. He's had a couple breakthrough seasons in a row. Yeah, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's multiple looks over the course of, an, uh, of a series. You know, Dennis Schroeder, absolutely off the mm -hmm. bench, is going to get a lot of those assignments. I think you'll see Austin Reeves probably starting on him. He's D'Angelo Russell is, is too slow a defender yeah. to be able to do that. I think you hide him on you know, Dylan Brooks or somebody like that who isn't going to be as, as prominent in the offense. Um, but, you know, I think you'll see Jared Vanderbilt. I think you're going to see LeBron every once in a while, you know, with, you know, on some of these switches. And it's a matter of trying to create different looks and different coverages because sometimes yeah. size with, with the transition small part guards, he's, right. He's going to get into that. Well, don't thing. keep him out of transition. Yeah. That's, that's the Easier said than done. <laughs> Uh, and, and by the way, Desmond Bain, a very good running mate with him in the backcourt. He can hit threes, he can no drive. Yeah. Lakers have their hands full defensively. He's a problem, too. Yeah. Uh, what's the matchup you're looking forward to most? Actually, I, I'm going to go with the bigs. Yeah. Uh, I want to see AD against Jaron Jackson it's Jr. Good, it's always a good, good, yeah, good time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. is 23 years old. He yeah. might win Defensive Player of the yeah. Year. The league just announced today that he's one of three finalists for the award, along with Brooke Lopez and Giannis. I mean, that's a that's, that's pretty good uh, trio right there. Um, so I, I give I give Jaron a lot of credit. He missed the first month of the season, but he came back to lead the league in block shots. Um, there's no Steven Adams, so a lot of pressure on this young kid. He's not good at staying out of foul trouble. If AD gets him with a couple quick fouls, if you take Jaron Jackson Jr. out of the equation, that start that paint starts to open up pretty wide for a guy like Anthony Davis. Yeah, and it's interesting. I think that's going to be a, a, a matchup that you see more on the Lakers side, where he's defending Jaron Jackson Jr. In, in a lot of situations. I think you'll see that. I think you'll see LeBron on him. I actually wonder how much Memphis, I think Memphis is going to try to avoid it for that foul trouble that you're talking about and see how long they can get away with Xavier Tillman mm -hmm. um, handling AD because yeah. if, like Brez says, if Jaron Jackson Jr. ends up in foul trouble, there is very little behind there that, that Memphis can go to with no Brandon Clark and no Steven yeah. Adams. And by yeah, the way, next, so is Giannis, who's one of the, the trio. Yeah. It was actually Mobley instead of Giannis. So Mobley, yeah. Jaron Jackson, Brooke Lopez, three pretty good defenders right So there. that's your matchup as well? No. Oh. <laughs> well, I was just, well, I was just what's talking your, right about what you're what, 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 okay. we, we <laughs> we're just, We're just guys talking. I, I thought he agreed with me. He no, thought it was the greatest yeah, matchup I thought ever. That was I think matchup. it's the one that a lot of people are, are, are pointing to already in the sort of the marquee thing. It's yeah. LeBron James and Dylan Brooks. It's, yeah. it's, Can't wait. You know, this yeah. is, you know, to see, you don't always see in a series like this one guy who's going to be matched up against another guy for this series. And I think if everything goes the way that Memphis wants to, this is what it's going to be. Dylan Brooks wants to guard LeBron James. Quite frankly, I think LeBron wants Dylan Brooks to guard him because remember all that happened last time. Maybe LeBron goes like 8 for 21 or whatever. And Dylan, I made him go left the entire game. And, this, and, and LeBron remembers all of these Yes, things. he does. Of course he does. And, and he's not going to uh, tolerate that over the course of a series. And I think that you risk if you are Dylan Brooks, um, poking not just the bear, but a basketball computer yeah. um, who you know, was, is scouting and understands it. And I, I think that is a matchup that I'm into. Because if Dylan Brooks wins that matchup, the Lakers got a problem. All right, X Factor for you both. Go, Brass. Uh, D'Lo. I, I mean, look, he was not great in the play-in, one for nine. Uh, did not play a lot down the stretch. He's got to be the guy that bounces back. And I think he will. I, I'm not that concerned about what happened the other day. One game is not a trend. That's, that's, you learn that like in the first class in, in journalism school, BK. One game is not a trend. Now, if he starts to suffer in game one of this series and then game two, uh, I, you that's know, three. That's, 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 a three. Yeah, that's a trend. Then you're starting to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, as as uh, Darvin said, after the play-in game, 
D'Lo is a huge part of what we want to do on this playoff run that we're about to embark on. I think he's going to have a nice little bounce back. He's my X factor for the series. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one step further. It's, it's D'Lo from the perimeter in all of the Lakers' three-point yeah. shooters, I think, mm-hmm. because you know, we talked about keeping Ja to transition. Yeah. You got to make the ball go into the basket to do that. You make you miss a lot of threes. They're running. If you make them, you got a chance to uh, to, to keep them from from getting on the break. And the way that Memphis defends, they will give up a lot of open three pointers. It's that Mike Budenholzer style of, yeah. of of defense. And teams have been all season long, even after the trade deadline, daring the Lakers to hit three pointers. De, uh, D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, uh, Malik Beasley, I think, yeah. could be a huge factor in these games. A couple of really big Bees games. Um, if the Lakers hit threes, that changes the series profoundly. Strong effort by both right there. We're yeah, heading to break. You. D'Angelo Russell struggled in the Lakers' play in victory against the Wolves. Up next, D'Lo on staying ready no matter when his name is called. But first, a throwback to Kobe's final game seven years ago. Uh, how many years ago? Seven years ago yesterday. Ooh. 